MDA is a model that is focused to the software design and implementation and then it uses a subset of the UM models to describe a system. A computation independent model that means a CIM here which will be based on the domain abstraction factors. Aim of automation in a software project is to make sure that you reduce the manual intervention into the project and try to focus more towards the output. Good morning and welcome to the third session in Unit 3, 5th semester BCA Software Engineering where we're going to speak about system modeling. Now in this session, we're going to talk about the modern driven architecture which is very important for the software project management. Why? Because when we talk about this, this is more from the perspective of a model driven engineering. Now MDA is a model that is focused to the software design and implementation and then it uses a subset of the UM models to describe a system. So which means to say that when I say a model focused approach that is a purpose there is an objective on which we are going to go here and it is based on that factor. So whenever we are going to talk about it we are going to look into it in terms of the observation in terms of the factors of how things are going to work and how we are going to take it forward in terms of the UML models altogether. Followed by which models at different levels of abstractions are created so we are going to create different abstractions models so that we can use it from the lowest level to that of the highest level. Now they are platform independent which means you can run it in any of the software languages. It might be uh, Java, it might be .NET, it might be C++. You can run it a platform independent and in principle to generate a working program without manual intervention. So what we want here is an automated system that can run on its own, that can deliver the output that is required without any manual manual interpretation. Now the next thing that we are going to get into it is that the types of model a computation independent model that means a CIM here which will be based on the domain abstraction factors. So CIMs are sometimes called as domain models. Now this is very very important why because it is a platform independent model point number one. Point number two is that these model the operation of the system without its reference to its implementation. Yes that matters a lot. The PIM is usually described using UML models which is very very important that shows the static system structure and how it responds to the external and the internal event. So this is very very important for all of us in terms of understanding it. Now when you look in here these are certain things when I talk about the operation without the reference to it implementation. Now every time you don't have to come back and tell me where this is going to be implemented, where this is going to be pushed across. I am just running it. Why? Because the models are available and independently it will start working and it will start responding to how it starts going about. So this is very very important for all of us to understand to what level to what extent it goes. The next thing is that platform specific models. Now this is also very important. Why? Because these are transformations of platform independent model with a separate PSM for each application platform. Now this is very very interesting for all of us. Why? Because this is platform independent. In this principle there might be layers of PSM with each layer adding to some platform specific detail. So definitely you will see that there is a lot of platform independent model which means to say that for each and every application actually there is a separate application model available and the layers of PSM will be adding into that specific factors. So let's say that I'm going to create an order specific kind of a system or a generation model here. We can see that there is a platform independent so we don't have to worry how we are working which language and this can be done in detail for each and every model. 
Now, moving further, the agile methods that are coming in. Now, what agile itself to mean to say that it is flexible, it can address the needs of the software developer at any point of time. So, what we are trying to do is that an iterative approach for development that can use with the agile. When I use the word iterative, that means again and again, I can add up changes. I can keep on implementing, bringing in new additions to the project. Now, that is why I would always like to say that a project needs to be flexible enough to accept the changes and deliver as per the needs of the consumer. Suppose we are doing a project which is very rigid, which is very, very tight water component altogether, then we will get ourselves stuck. So this is where I'm coming into the upfront modeling that I'm going to talk about a few agile development model factors and I feel comfortable in terms of a model driven engineering. Why? Because I'm able to take that specific part again, change it, re-modify it, deliver it. And this is something which goes in tandem with that of the requirement from the customer standpoint. So I don't have to keep looking out for methods, again, remodel it all together. I just need to change what I really want and I can keep moving further. If transformations can be completely automated, and a complete program generated from PIM, then the principle MDA could be used as an agile development process as no separate coding would be required. So now this is where I'm trying to bring in saying the factor that the transformations can be completely automated. Now that's brilliant. Why? Because if it's completely automated, as I'm trying to talk about, then we don't have to look into the agile system factors here at all. It can automatically take it forward and you don't need to have any separate coding process to come into picture here so that you don't need it at all in terms of understanding, in terms of taking it forward. Now, the next thing is that it's an executable ML that's going to come into picture when the executable unified modeling language comes into picture. That means it's completely automated for the transformation and the code should be able to run by itself. This is possible by bringing in a subset of UML2, which is called as an executable UML. Now, the aim of automation in a software project is to make sure that you reduce the manual intervention into the project and try to focus more towards the output. So when you're going towards the output, when you're going towards the software delivery part, what we try to see here is that the system is able to accommodate the changes, the system is able to adapt to the requirements and keep moving forward with the flow. So that's where exactly in software engineering, the agile methods have been developed in order to make the system more appreciable in nature. Now, moving further, the features of an executable UML. Now, there are three features that we are going to talk about. The one thing is the domain model that can identify the principal concerns of the system. So when I talk about a finance domain, when I talk about a BFSI domain, when I'm going to talk about utilities, I'm going to talk about government, whatever is the domain model, they are defined by the UML class itself. The class models in which the classes are defined, their attributes and operations. Then we have the state models in which the state diagram is associated with each class. So now what is happening is that domain specific, class specific, state specific. So I am getting down to the nuts and bolts of the entire concept, which will make me understand why this is necessary and how this needs to be executed in the long run. Now, the next thing is that the dynamic behavior of the system may be specified declaratively. Now, that's very, very important because it's an objective you know, constraint in terms of the language factor and is expressed during the UML's action language altogether. So it's important for us to see here Whenever we are declaring an object, now there might be certain constraints because this might not work with the project, this might not work with the delivery functions altogether, but nothing to worry. This is still expressed as this factor and you can take it forward in terms of the UML action language. Now, the key points that we are going to again reiterate is that behavioral models are being used, they are being moderated from the perspective of data processed by the system and the events that stimulate the responses, 
activity diagrams will be used to model the processing of data wherever the activity represents one step. So the prime idea here is that to accept that dynamic behavior within yourself execute the system now we need to understand here is that it is in perspective to the data driven model the data points are very very important and whenever the processing of data is being done each and every activity is being told and it has been represented from one step to the next step as far as possible now the other thing is that we are talking about the state diagrams which are coming into picture that is because it will respond to the system behavior right from the internal or external factor. Model driven engineering is used in software development, which is a system that is used to represent as a set of models automatically transformable into an executable code. So I'm not getting manual intervention here. Automatically that set of models can be moved into an executable mode. It can be run on any platform independent. It can be tested found out whether it is matching according to the needs of the consumer and if there is going to be any problems we're going to debug that code we're going to come back and we can always change it now with this i come to the end of this particular session i hope and believe that all the points that have been discussed here would be of a great help to you both in terms of theory as well as in the practical walk of life in the upcoming session, we're going to talk about the architectural designs and what are the factors that make this architectural design a very interesting part of the software engineering. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed, have a great day. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.